Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Uh, we got this is this is a very special playoff episode. We got a lot to cover. Uh, we taught Alex how to play craps. Uh, we Good also question. learned to get a shoe shine. Um, and somebody here went, I think, undefeated with the picks. I don't know who that person is, but we'll cover that. Uh, once again, I'm with uh, Javon the Freak Curse. We got Lamar, Real Money Mitchell, Alex, and uh, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> and I'm Brett, Mr. Pick'em Ertz. Anybody else take Clemson in the money line? Just so this guy did. I know a Good guy job. that did 200,000 Clemson. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. why? Like why? Like first of all, you're you're brand new to the show. And you just like embarrass me in front of everybody. Yeah. I, I won fifty bucks, and you got to throw that somebody who won two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Not the only one that took Clemson. <laughs> well, I'm happy I won fifty dollars, two hundred thousand. It like. Yeah. So let me ask, where was where was the money? You know the public's always wrong. It was on Bama. Wow. Money was on Bama. Wow. On Bama. Really quick, uh, can public. I just, I'm yeah. sorry, man. I want to I want to introduce you first before you you, you start throwing out your expertise here. Uh, this is Lamar Mitchell. Now, he's the director of the race and sports book here at the Mandalay Bay and MGM Properties as well, correct? MGM Grand. Uh, MGM Grand. Correct. But all the properties. Just at MGM Grand. Okay. So this is Jay Rude's conciliary. If Jay Rude was John Gotti, this is his Sammy the Bull. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. So explain us. All the money was on Alabama, huh? Yeah, all the money was on Alabama. And we had one guest come in and say, give me 200000 on Clemson. I talk to this guy all the time. This guy is always betting six figures constantly. He took it on the chin on Sunday, but he made up for it on Monday. Wow. Well, I bet two figures, dog. <laughs> 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 Who's better than me? Man. Wow. All right, so uh, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. What, what do you guys want to cover first? National championship? I, I want to hear your hunch on Clemson. You yeah. took a guy born in 99 <laughs> under center. I uh, I did not see that, man. True freshman. I did not see Look, that at all. Look, Lawrence is the second coming of Peyton Manny. There's only been one other quarterback that's been compared to Peyton Manny, and that's Andrew Luck. So you better get on Lawrence now. Wow. Mitchell coming in with me. <laughs> Here was my thing. I, I, I said this, and I think we talked about it at breakfast. Uh, Alabama's a machine. Clemson's a family. And no, those kids have been playing tough and playing together all year. Like I said, that quarterback, uh, I don't even think he knew he was in a, in, a, in, a, in a championship game. He was composed. It just, it, it was great. And plus, we also forgot to mention, Tua was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, so. Yeah. Bad luck. Matt, yes. Madden curse, yeah. Sports Illustrated Lots curse, that's a thing. But my thing is, did anyone think second half, um, Nick Saban was going to come out and switch up the quarterbacks? Like the beginning of the second half? I, 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 def I definitely thought that. I mean, he did I, it last year. I think, I didn't I think that would have been, a, I thought it would have been stupid. He did it last year, and it would have been stupid if he didn't if it didn't work last year. Yeah, but last year Hertz was ineffective in the first half. Right. And this year Tua was not ineffective. Mm -hmm. He was still moving the team, I but agree. he wa it wasn't doing enough though. I not mean, enough, but that was a, that was a defense though. Right. But yeah, but I was gonna say you, you may want to throw that change up out there, but he had, he had two turnovers early on, like um in in the first half. Um, yeah. But <laughs> well, what does that say? I mean, I mean that gets also to Jalen Hurts. I mean, what what, what do you think's going on with that? He's outie. Oh, transferring? He's out. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that he stuck around for the whole season. Uh, well, I mean. I see it was a good thing, though. It, it showed that he, it showed some some humility there. Uh-huh. It, it shows that he may want to be a professional. So, you know what? Like, I understand how things are right now. I'm just going to sit back instead of, like, as soon as things don't go your way, just jump on the first train out of there. So, I, I, I think, thought. I think yeah, I agree with you. Uh, um, I think it showed a lot. Yeah, it does. It did. It, I, think it, I think it showed as a, a lot. As of the end, was that game one a loss in the trenches, Clemson-Bama? Yeah. Yes. Um, Farrell's a I don't, I'm not trying to say it was all Lawrence, but like his offensive line did a pretty good job, and he's he's not he's not a pushover. He definitely made me into a believer. Like well, the, if you notice too, he was missing passes in the beginning. You know, he was kind of getting his his groove, but then the right. kid just he didn't even let that bother him. Say what? Some of those catches too. Oh yeah. So, that was, Justin Ross was phenomenal with those catches. Out of control. Yeah. Freshman, just phenomenal. Another freshman, freshman. Yeah. Listen, the catches that they were making in the second half, like, that's what happens when it's, when, it's, when you're meant to win. Like, things just go your way. I'm talking they snatch it down, balls with one hand, like, tipping the ball to themselves. Like, it was one of those things to where it's like, like, Bama could, couldn't do anything right, and Clemson couldn't do anything wrong. Oh, just, well, you, just, you know everybody took Bama second half, too. And they were... I Again, think somebody else loser. did too. <laughs> oh, you know what I took? I had Bama first quarter minus 0.5. You remember how that ended? 
Yeah. On the one yard line, plenty of time. Full start. <laughs> yes. Let me eat frozen food again for the week. Awesome, Tua. Phenomenal. I, I want to get back to because we were all in a group text during the game, and you and somebody was bringing up should he bring in switch quarterbacks. Um, if you're going with Tua for the future, man, I, yeah. I, I think that I, I, you know I don't think that would have shown. I think that would have hurt. That's more, a good point. That's more a than really good point. Uh, I thought Tua did enough in the first half to not warrant a, a quarterback switch. I mean, like I say, last year Hurts was completely right. ineffective. And Tua, you know, besides that interception in the first half, he was still putting passes on point, throwing dimes, the touchdown he threw. So, yeah, I, I don't think, like it, you said, if you're going to go with Tua, you got to stick with you got to stick with him, especially if you know this is going to be your future. And that kid is ice. That kid's a phenomenal quarterback. Oh, no, definitely. If, if Jalen Hurts <clears throat> transfers, where do you think he goes? Here in hometown Houston, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. So. I would go to an SEC rival and just stick it to him. I would. I what would are you love. saying? What about Florida? Corn Frogs, TCU. TCU? What about Florida? Woo! We can, I like that. Well, who needs a quarterback right I'm, now? I'll be honest. Like, we can definitely use him at Florida. Like, we can definitely use right. him over there, his expertise. Right. Do, do, here's my question, because I don't, I don't know anymore, because <clears> I'm old. Do they still have to sit out a year if they transfer? Or that doesn't no. or that doesn't do that anymore. anymore. They they can get the hardship uh, rule right now, so they have to prove that there's a hardship why they don't have to sit out. It's certain things as hardship. Say like if you have a parent sick that's like lives in the state or whatever that or you, where you want to transfer, you can get it that way. Or so we could the, fake an illness. Guess right. whose mom just got a cold? <laughs> <laughs> guess, guess Did you guys hear Mrs. Hertz has has the flu? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Hertz has a hangnail. <laughs> Holy crap. All right, before we move, I know we got to go. I want a quick question: Kyler Murray, NFL or baseball? Oh, he's got the football bug. I like the football thing, but. His height, I think, would affect him, but it's, it's, it's there, there's other short quarterbacks. Yeah, he, if he's smart, he goes football. He goes football all the way because he's, he's not – first round, yeah. He's not going to make that money in baseball until later in his contract. So if he goes football right now, he's getting the money right now. And I, I feel like he, he may be able to always go back to the baseball thing. I mean, Tebow never even played baseball, played in the NFL for a little bit, and then went out for baseball. He don't didn't, don't, he didn't don't do, remind no, – don't I'm remind, remind us. everybody of Tim Do Tim. not remind us. <laughs> yes, Speaking yes. of which – Playing for the Mets in this triple league city here. No, I'm just saying. Us. But this for a kid who didn't even play baseball in college or, or – or pros, and then finally, like, after we retired from football, I don't, I don't even know if he ever even retired, but went from NFL to trying not for baseball. That was big. He retired with his first pass. Listen, oh, I think man. the smart and long no. play, I think the long play, uh, I go baseball. <laughs> Dude, pull a Charlie Ward. You know what I mean? You play basketball, live longer, live I mean, healthier. This, this, you got to ride the bus, man. So, <laughs> but triple there's a. definitely, <laughs> there's definitely a, a lot of longevity, like going the baseball route. But I also think that um, like the football thing doesn't work out. Well, you can do it for a little bit and then switch. What over. if he gets hurt though? Like I know you could do baseball and go. It's it's pretty hard unless you. But what if he pulls a John Elway and gets uh, drafted by the Yankees? He's still a long way from. Still yeah, a long way away from free big league. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. all I got. Yeah, already drafted. Whatever. Bro. That's right, he is. Okay. But, but what about the money he's, that he's received? And he's going to have to pay that back. Pay how does back? that work? I don't even know how that works. John, you're the baseball guy here. I would think you would have to pay it back if he doesn't yeah. show up. But uh, just think about this. Oakland will have lost the Raiders and a baseball player in the same year. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the Warriors moving out of Oakland, too. <laughs> oh, for Sprinkle real? that on. Yeah, they're moving out of Oakland. Are and, they really? And Black Panther. <laughs> Why? Where is he going? No, that's where Black Panther took place. Wakanda! Oh, okay. I thought it was in the... All right, anyways. Wakanda forever. <laughs> Can we just, I know we got to move. Please. Okay. Tim Tebow got engaged. This just yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It came across my ticker. Yes. Yeah, Tim Tebow got engaged. So congratulations, Tim. Congratulations. <laughs> Definitely hit the over, Tim. Definitely hit the over. <laughs> well, let's move on to our gentleman segment. Um, now, in the last episode, I taught Alex that you, a, a gentleman gets a manicure and a pedicure. So in this episode, uh, I teach Alex that he needs a shoe shine. Your shoe should shine like your fingernails. So we met with uh, uh, Jim here in Vegas, which uh, he's probably the best shoe shine guy in Vegas. And uh, he taught us how to properly get a shoe shine and what to look for and all kinds of useful information. So uh, let's watch it.
All right, so we're here at the Mandalay Bay, and I'm standing here with Jim. Uh, Jim does shines the shoes here at Mandalay Bay. Jim, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? I'm from New York. I was born in Brooklyn in 1924. 1924, that's a long time ago. Well, I'm only 94. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you look good, man. And I tell everybody, I've told over a thousand people already here, keep working and you won't get Alzheimer's. Keep working. So what was your, was this always your job or did you do something? No, no. What'd you do before this? Well, I shined shoes on the a, on a subways of New York in 1932. Okay. I was only nine years old. We shined Saturday and Sunday for three and a half years. That was America. That was the Great Depression in America. So you were, you were shining shoes during the Great Depression? Right. Oh, wow. Now, and that's what you did your whole, did you have another career after that, another business? Well, after that, from 1932 to 34, 35, then came the war. Uh-huh. I volunteered in 1942. I was 18. I volunteered in the Navy. I was torpedoed on a first ship. They sunk seven out of 16 ships one night, one o'clock in the morning, and I got away on a raft. That was my first ship. So wait, so you're in the Atlantic, they sunk the ships, and you got away on a raft. Right. Oh, it's, this is amazing. <laughs> this is the guy that's shining the shoes here at Mandalay Bay. It's a war hero. Hi, Jim, this is Alex. Nice to meet you. So we, we're, we're trying to teach, I'm trying to teach this kid like how to be a man, how to be a gentleman. I think to, to be a man, a shoe shine is very important. Wouldn't you agree? Well, shoes make a man. And in the last couple of years, all I see is sneakers. Right. It's an embarrassment. Let me tell you something. This guy's a legend. And he's on our show now. And he's going to show us the proper way to shine a pair of shoes. Why, Jim? Because shoes make the man. Right. Right. Jim, right. you Italian? Yeah, I'm Italian. All right, nice. And we drank wine every night. And peaches. We used to make 100 gallons of wine a year back in the 30s. Wine was on the table every night. Absolutely. I could sit and talk with Jim all day, but we got to get our shoes shined, and uh, I, I can't, I can't wait, wait, wait to see your work. So, Jim, what are you doing right now? What's the, what's the first, first things first? Well, uh, this is, this is a wash, but it's got polish in it. Okay. It's a cleaner, and it's got polish. Look and how dull these shoes are. And nobody's got it. I get this by the gallon. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, my great-grandfather lived to 103. Oh, that was great. He gave me three tips. He said, take a walk every day, stretch every day, and never eat past when you're full. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll take that. So this is the technique that you invented? Yeah. You, you were the first to do this? Yeah, I'm the first one. Nobody had it. Nobody. What this, gave you the idea? I thought about it because when you put the polish on, it takes a while for the polish to dry. Then I thought about this, to make it dry. So now that you get the dirt out, what's the next move? What, the what? You said now, now I gotta put the polish on. Now you put the polish on. Shoes make a man. Hey Jim, I have a question. Did you ever shine anybody famous their shoes? I don't know. But one guy we shine, my daughter, my daughter helps me out when I'm busy. She shines somebody. And the guy next to her knew him. After he left, the guy said he's worth $3 billion. Really? Three, he only gave her $15. Oh, God. That's why he's worth billions. A billionaire. Ooh, Maron, look at that. You can see your reflection. Is that a good shine? Beautiful. Very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Look at Thank that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. I Thank really, you. really Thank appreciate you. what Jim. you do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate okay. you. Was, this has been amazing. All right, let's amazing. go. Let, let, let's go show off our shoes. And what I tell you and you, tell other people. All right. Help other people. I agree. Absolutely. Okay. Well, we're going to come grab you for a drink. Let's go, Alex. Okay. Right. You getting a drink with us. All right, Jim. All right. Yeah. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Jim. Uh, how awful were at, how awful were his shoes? This kid, he walks around like a bum. Yeah, he had bad he had bad shoes. <laughs> <laughs> they were terrible. Yeah. Now, 
uh, again, you were telling us, what did somebody say about you? They say you're not only the best in Vegas. Yeah, well, I have people coming back year in and year out, and mostly they come back to see if I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you are. We want to know if I'm, I'm 94. That's great. Anyway, I want them to live long, so I tell them to keep working and don't quit. Because you only get Alzheimer's if you stop working and your brain ain't doing anything. See. But if you keep your brain going, you don't have to worry about Alzheimer's. All right, that's good. I don't have to worry. It's great to know. Why, see, you should have kept playing. <laughs> no, that's why I, I'm retired and I'm doing this now. I'm doing Got to keep working. Yeah. Got to keep working. So that's one of the keys to live to 90. If you don't want to work five days, work four or three. Okay. If you don't like a job, get another job. Work for McDonald's. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just keep working. Just that's it. Okay. And um, also, too, I want to show you. I got yeah, a. Uh, taking notes. Oh, you better. Oh, Alex, you, here, gotta, you better learn some of these things. Hey, so. I'm now walking around. I'm now walking around saying the shoes make the man. Thanks to you. Here, I want to show you something. Shoes do make a man. Look at these right here. Because Jim. when you meet, when you meet, uh, that's a, that's a good shoe. These are Allen Edmonds. You said that these are the they make the best. Yeah, the best Allen Edmonds. Yeah. Now look what he's wearing. Sneakers, this kid. Yeah, sneakers. He's an embarrassment. <laughs> what is that? Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. You, you said no one see in my lower body. <laughs> It's what? chest up. Let me see. That what is this? Shame. It's a loafer for what casual clients. You can talk, Ken. What do you want to know? Huh? <laughs> throw it? Just get rid of it? Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking of? Don't throw those shoes out. What, what is this thing? These kids are. I, I can't see it too good. Well, those are awful. No, there's nothing to look at. You don't need that, to see those. Those look like good in plenty. Yeah. I, I could never wear shoes like this. <laughs> I don't even think I mean, I'm supposed to be in my prime. I don't even think shoes like that would wear shoes like that. <laughs> now I'm never going to be in the six foot club. Oh, did you ever no. learn? Did you learn anything? From I really, no, I really. No, then why are you wearing those uh, 1980s uh, dock boat shoes? They said I could be comfortable. All right. Another good company, I'll, I'll Johnson and Murphy. Johnson, Johnson and Murphy. Good shoes. company. Which one? Good leather. They got good leather. The leather lasts 20 years. Johnson and Murphy and... But Alan Edmonds is the best. Alan Edmonds, right here. Not those pay less uh, dock shoes. Unbelievable. Yeah. Those are embarrassing. You should I'll be embarrassed. I'll never wear sneakers. Yeah, that's enough. I hate wearing <laughs> sneakers. They're I'm left. saving your shoes for a special occasion. Wait. I didn't want to I didn't want to scuff them up here. Did you hear what he said? Around. Say yes. that again, sir. Say it again, I Jim. heard it. He hates sneakers. Go ahead. Tell him about sneakers. What's about the name? sneakers. You yeah. were saying you hate it. Sneakers... Sometimes I see a guy dressed up in a suit with sneakers on. I say to myself, that guy's not too smart. <laughs> oh, man. That's his generation. Not too smart. Not too smart. Yeah. Well, Jim, listen, thank you so much for coming in. We would love to keep bringing you in on certain segments every now and then. I think we should honor Jim and, and his service to our country, too, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. got a World War II veteran here. Um, here's to Jim. Hey, I was here's the to Jim. Yeah. Invasion. Salute. At the Normandy Invasion. Salute. Let's recap NFL Wild Card Weekend. The Cowboys won. Cody Parkey's kick was blocked. One of us on the panel went undefeated. So, Brett, you have the floor. First off, let's talk about Cody Parkey's kick. Uh, guy was getting death threats, but it ended up, it, it was ruled a block. A lot of people don't know that. He didn't miss the field goal. It was blocked. You know what was interesting was talking with Lamar at breakfast. He, he, shot, he shot it, he made it, and then right. they called the timeout. They Had he them. missed that, I think he gets the miss out of the way. He makes it after the timeout. Any, any thoughts on the psychology he, behind that? He, it was blocked. He didn't miss anything. Yeah, but no, the they put up the jinx stat that he missed the second most amount of kicks in the season. So you knew once he made that practice shot, mm -hmm. something bad was going to happen in that next shot. Uh, I, Even I, blocked. Well, I mean, did you know it or did you assume it? Oh, I knew it. Well, I never assume. Oh, I knew it, baby. And the thing is, like, when these teams ice these kickers, the kickers know they're going to get ice. Yeah. So they kick that first kick. It's with no pressure at all. Like, oh, like I'm in practice right now. Boop. Done deal. Then when the, girl, when the real thing happens, like, it's so different. It's just so different. They know they're going to get ice. So, like, they kick that first one. Let me get a practice in. That second one is, like, totally different. It's, like, like night and day. Was that worse than the Blair Walsh one from the Minnesota-Seattle playoff game? Oh, where does this I rank? Don't, where does I this think, rank? I think, Playoff missed kicks. Think, that think, was the Blair think, Walsh was worse. I think that was yeah. worse. That was, again, a, that was a chippy. Somebody, inside. somebody blocked the kick. 
That's so fair. yeah, that's it, another thing. It, it did it did get blocked. So and, and it would have went good. through if it didn't get tipped. It hit the God, man. I mean, what is it? Five, what is it? Five inches? It, it, five, six, five, five, five inches five. wide. Yep. Five inches wide. I mean, boom, boom, and boom. You felt. I mean, I felt for all my Chicago friends out there too. We got a mailbag question for Javon. John from Michigan wants to know what do you say to the kicker in the locker room? I mean, being a kicker is a tough job. Like, that's all they do. Like, you don't get to go back out and, like, jump off sides and go back out and, um, say, get a face mask and go back and make another play. Like, that's it. Like, that is it. So, I mean, I guess you, you can try to, like, keep them up or whatever because basically what we tell ourselves, we, we take pride in, we should never, ever let the game come down to a kick. So, we can't blame the kicker. He's doing his, they're doing their job. But we got to do our job before it even gets to that point where it, it would even have to come down to either – a one point difference or a three point difference. Has there ever been a kick a kicker with a perfect uh, season? Yes. Morton Anderson was perfect was for the, the was Vikings. The Vikings? The year that they lost to the Falcons in the Dirty Bird. He missed the field goal. That was his first miss. That was his first miss for the entire year. It was in, it was in yeah. postseason. Yes. The strong. Who needs Google? <laughs> We, we got Lamar. We got, Lamar. <laughs> we got Sammy the ball. We the Moogle over we there. Don't need anybody. <laughs> so uh, again, though, man, uh, the death threats. <laughs> what was great is that. Was, did you see the picture with him and his hot wife? He was like smiling on the beach, like. Already, so you think he booked this flight that day, or oh, he got morning? out of? He had to get out of town. They were gonna burn him down. They were gonna kill him. Went on airplane mode. We'll see you. <laughs> Oh, but you can't, you can't, you can't be threatening this man before you I, leave the stadium. Like, Javon, at least get home and see your kids and walk your dog. He's going to the Bahamas after an L. Everyone in Chicago's freezing the next. Yeah, day. they're right. freezing. That, that, was even more, that was even more of a. That's he's a, like, hey guys, hey, yeah, hey, I'm in the sun. <laughs> you, Over you threatened real. my life. I you had to go back to work. Uh, right, take Jim, care, see Jimmy. You, see you, Jim. Thanks for hanging out with us. Jim's the best. Wonder if he had the points. I don't think Jim doesn't gamble. Jim, Jim's yeah. the house. No. He was Jim collects the juice. Jim doesn't gamble. So let's talk about your Cowboys. Let's you had an intuitive feeling. Let's talk about the Cowboys. You got to feel a little weight off your shoulders. W's got to feel great. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, look, we didn't cover. We pushed. But um, some people had two and a half. Yeah, some people had two and a half. How and that, that two point conversion at the end of the game or. Well, that I was, was thinking that a lot of like, money in the room swung the other way. Well, so I'm watching it going. What I mean, well, then again, when I told my brother when Jen and Kowski went down, I said, if if they're behind, they're not going to go for a field goal. They're going to go for two points. That was such a key people. That was a right. Key no, that, that changes, oh, yeah. changes the whole game, how they played the game. But at and the it, same time, they, they know if they're not going to kick, they're going to go for going to keep going for it. So that also is in their favor. Wasn't there a coach? Yeah. Quote me if I'm wrong, that never punted. I, 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 high school, high school, high school, college, and then yeah, um, was they did a study. The, pro the probability kicks. was just it was in it was is in their favor. To, to it was like sixty-eight percent to the positive. Yeah. yeah. Right. Other than yeah. then punting and punting analytics. Field position. Yeah. Once again, analytics. So that kind of made me nervous. But Janikowski, he never gets. He reminds me of the kicker from the replacements. He's just boozing and drinking on the sideline. He pulls a hand. First Unbelievable. All, if we're doing a degenerate. De, uh, a degenerate gentleman or degentleman Hall of Fame. Janikowski's on that. He's Absolutely. On that wall. Golf club. Right next to right next to Jim. The guy was re he was recruited at Florida State <laughs> after the wide right. That's the whole reason why they got yeah. him. Because they lost good. to Miami. Yeah. yeah, don't don't. That's 92, 93. This guy's been around. He's been around. He's yeah. in his forties, right? Is Ooh. he? Jim. Who's older, him or Ben and Terry? Ben and Terry's Terry. older. Oh. Yeah. Vinatieri's old. Really? Speaking of which, you were the only one that had the Colts. Another one. I know. What was the intuition? I think the, I think the Colts, I mean, we'll yeah, talk about this later with, with the picks. I think the Colts are the best team right now. I mean, they are gelling. Luck is on fire. Um, although I have, uh, you know, for the picks next, for this week, I'll, I'll keep it keep it quiet. But Javon's a defensive guy. You look at the Colts. I mean, outside of being an Indy fan or an AFC South guy, you can't really name a lot of stars. It's it's a group. It's a nucleus. Nah, it's by committee. <laughs> I mean, the whole team comes together. I think the biggest part is just having luck back. That makes the whole team go on both sides of the ball. A, te a team will always be a, a machine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I got to agree. Luck, having luck back is, yeah. is really pushing them offensively to spread the ball around to those receivers and the running game. 
and that draft pick they had in the first round from Notre Dame, which I despise Notre Dame. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and how happy were you when they got ran out? Oh, that, I was really happy about that. <laughs> Burn Why do you hate them so much? Uh, they always get a bowl bid? They can, go, they can win four games? Well, and they're in a bowl? No, no offense against Javon, but I'm a Kane fan, so. Me too, all day, buddy. There you go. All there day. you go. Uh, all the, the day. What is this? I'm sandwiched between two hurricanes. That's right. I didn't back to, that. Are you, back to the glory days. Are you a Cowboys fan too? You better believe it. <laughs> oh, my God. Jay who? Look, hey, what happened? <laughs> Jay who? We need to switch these two seats to over here, man. Stop what is this? Man what is this? Oh, my God. What is this? Is this? What is like, going what on? Is it looks like Jim's handkerchief. That's great. I, when, Jay, when does Jay come back? <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Cowboys handkerchief. That's out of control. You right. like that. You're jealous, right? I wouldn't go that far, but I'm, I'm, I'm born after the handkerchief era. So, What do you mean? Who has a handkerchief in the 90s? Who, who, wears, who wears boat shoes? 80s boat shoes. From San Diego. What, what's wrong? Gentlemen have a handkerchief, by the way. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I'll, feel free to yell out, studio. Yeah. Don't worry about I'll it. I'll put There's that in my back pocket. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still disgusted at your shoes. How dare you? You weren't alive when those shoes were popular. Hey, those said, shoes were popular like 79, 80. To be honest, bro, it doesn't look like he was alive when those shoes, but that shoe was made. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was pretty old, man. Unbelievable. Like, uh, Taking it out on my picks this week. <laughs> they look like devil dogs. Please remember devil so dogs? Do you remember devil dogs? The uh, hostess yeah, devil dogs? Yodels. That's what, yeah, yodels. That's what they. Drake's <laughs> case. Dude. Great. Especially oh, on the Budweiser. Were those even seat. real leather? Yes. No. <laughs> Wow. All right. I'd have wore them to a bar mitzvah back in the day. Let's get, we got to get to the degenerate segment. Please. Have you ever walked by a craps table, saw a group of people having a great time, wanted to get involved, but were just intimidated by the game because you had no idea what the hell was going on? Well, one of the pit bosses here at Mandalay Bay, Robert, took me and Alex to the uh, high roller room where we have never been before and taught us how to play some of the more popular table games like roulette, craps, and blackjack. So I'm bringing to you our how do you play segment here, and this one is how do you play craps. Go ahead, Alex, kick it off. All right, we're chilling in the new high limit room at the Mandalay Bay, waiting on our boy Robert. Yeah, he's gonna teach us how to play a little craps, a little blackjack, a little roulette. We're sipping on a little Comisario. It's delicious. Te tequila, it's our newest sponsor. This stuff's f phenomenal. I'm about I'm not, it. I'm not a big tequila guy, but I am now. Are you a craps guy? You know I am. All right. Well, you know I'm a roulette. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to learn about blackjack. You know what? I watch it sometimes. I get confused. I know you're supposed to go to 21 or whatever, but oh, Robert's going to give us some pointers and win some money, I think. It's the 21. I'm, Let's get it. I'm serious. I mean, you ever watch it, people yelling at each other? There's like a lot of etiquette and rules to blackjack, so that's what I'm curious to ask about. I'm excited. Let's go hit up Robert. A lot of people are intimidated by craps. So can you take us through, like, two guys come up, there's nothing on a table, and we're about to play. What, what would be our yeah, first I'll show bet? you the basics of the game, how to yeah. start and how to play. Basically, when we start a crap game, we start on the pass line, make a bet on the pass line. On the first roll of dice, when the puck is off, 7-11, you'll win. 2-3-12, we'll lose. So we roll it, boom. OK, right. we got a Which four. Which we would go to the, fall, the whole other side of the table. But we got a four. OK. We will have to get a four before a seven. If we get a four, we will win. If we get a seven, it will wipe out the board. So four becomes our point. Four is your point. So the goal now is to roll a four before a seven. Yes. That's it. So that's no it. other numbers matter what you roll unless you're betting on other numbers. So now the next move that I'm, I usually do is I put insurance, which is behind Those me. are odds. We call them odds. Those are called odds? Yes. One thing about odds, it's the best bet you can make on the table. When you, when you bet your odds, they pay true. Now the odds change as the numbers change. If we have a five as a point on five and nine, instead of two to one, it pays three to two. It plays just like a blackjack. So Robert, I see those double numbers in the middle of the table. What are those? Those are the hard ways, four, six, eight, and 10. If you bet a hard way, say since our point is four, we're gonna use the four. If you bet a hard way, to win it, it must come to two. A three one will lose the bet, a seven will lose the bet. It must come as the picture shows. So what are the red double numbers? 
Anything in the red, any bets that are in the red, all the proposition bets, the field bets, the hot bets, the CNEs, they are all one roll bets. The next roll will determine whether you win or lose. And if you don't hit it? If you don't hit it, it gets wiped out. If you hit it, we pay you the correct odds depending on what you hit. But everything here is just a one roll bet. Robert, what's the field bet mean? The field bet is a one roll bet. It's basically a proposition bet. It pays even money except on the two, which pays double, and the 12 that pays triple. It, so, looks, it looks very appealing because there are so many numbers in there. Actually, it's one of the worst bets on the table. Now, what's the come bet? The come bet is my favorite. It's basically a game within a game. It's the same as the pass line, but we've already established a point for the pass line, right? So your next bet, you might want to put so let's say we money put, on the comp. So we put money in a comp. All right, that's just like being on the pass line. 7-11, you so win. So now he, he rolls. 7-11, you win. 2-3 or 12, you will lose. Oh. We got a 9. We got a 9. So. The, the bets will come to 9. Now, points still 4. Mm -hmm. But now, you want the 4 or the 9 before the 7. Now, just like on the pass line, you can take odds. So, if you want, wanted to take $20 worth of odds on your $12 nine bet, we'd set it up like that, we'd offset it. As far as etiquette goes, players never reach past the cum. Anything that goes up here or anything that goes up there, the dealers will set up. You can throw it at them, tell them what you want, or if you're gonna bet up here, you can set it down, say I'd like odds on my nine, or make a place bet on, your, on the table, which we'll discuss here in a minute. Can we try and play again? Sure. Money Monaco, here he comes. Yeah. I like it. Eight, eight. again. There's that eight. eight. Eight, baby. Uh, All right, let's go. So I'm gonna play the odds. This is called the odds, right? Odds. I'll do come. He's bet. making a come bet. Wait up, Alex. And I'm still, I'm still gonna do that hard eight. I got a feeling about it. All right. Let's go. You need some bar mitzvah money. Six. Six. That's not bad. Keep it going. Keep so it going. now we go up to the six. Comes will go to the six, yes. Comes go to the six, okay. So that's our new point. You have a six and an eight now. Hold on, you know what I'm gonna do, one. Alex? Let's hear it. Hold on. I'm gonna do a, a hard six as well. Come on, buddy boy. I got you on the hard six. Oh, eight, eight, eight. Right. We eight's made the a point. winner. That's a winner eight. Let's go, Alex. Come on, buddy. What do you want? I want, <laughs> getting cocky. You just Let's get started, a six. So. Let's get a six. <laughs> get a hard six, man. 12, 12. perhaps. Oh, that's, that's a bad one. Wow, that's, wow, wow, wow. You're going to lose that that's one? That's what you don't do, kids. Call it out loud. <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, listen, Robert, I really appreciate you. Alex, let me ask you a question, man. Are you intimidated by this game now? You got an idea how to play? I'm ready to go play outside these doors right now. Do it. All right. Robert, appreciate hey, you, guys. man. Hey, no Thanks, buddy. Robert. Okay. No problem. This is for you. Hey, yeah. nice. Go get the kids some, some shoes. Yeah. God bless. Thank you. I should have said, <laughs> Alex needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm getting killed. <laughs> I'm getting killed. Hey. <laughs> oh, I, again, we want to thank uh, Commissario Tequila. Um, it's our new sponsor. They, they're, they're all served at the MGM now, you're yep, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're here at the MGM, yep. So this is the Anejo. Uh, this is what we were drinking before we were gambling. Delicious. Blanco and they have reposado as well. Uh, reposado. Wait, Blanco and reposado as well, yeah. And Blanco and Re You hear it. I don't have to say it. <laughs> Javon's um, ready to party. There we go. So uh, that's our little series of how to bet uh, on the table games. Oh, no, we got another one. We, we already did roulette. I know. We got blackjacks the, the next one, right? Yep. Next week. So uh, we'll, we'll keep doing more of those. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about, what is it, Kung Pao? Someone to yell at each other? <laughs> Kung Pao. Hi, gal, yeah. <laughs> Kung Pao. Kung Pao. Chicken, Kung oh, my bad. My spicy, bad. little bit yeah. spicy. <laughs> Kung Pao. Yeah, they're going to teach us how to make Kung Pao chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. I, I learned a lot, actually. Did you learn a well, lot? What was cool is that we learned, and then we went out in the fields, and... Got destroyed. No, Brett, Brett doubled down. I was on fire. I was his good luck charm. Mandalay Bay has been so good to me. It really has. I but, can't complain. But speaking of craps, I've been playing craps now for like 20 years. On the streets, though. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you play, and that's CeeLo. 
But I learn something different. I learn something new every time I play. Like every time I play. So like, and then most of the time I'm getting, I'm close to the dealer to where I'm like, dude, help me out, man. Like, 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 tell me something. Like, teach me something. Then they know me like teach me something every time I play. So what'd you learn on this? No field bets, right? Um, yeah, that was a good one there because I, I normally just go all across the field. <laughs> like e either way I go, I'm a, I'm a win. I'm gonna have insurance, but I always like lose my heart weight, lose my heart weight bet. Well, always put the hard way on. Well, remember the red. The red is a one roll. Right. So the yellow. The yellow bets are the whole game, and it's until it's it's you crap out. Our next hot topic on the show: Nick Foles and the Eagles set to take on the Saints in the Superdome. So the question to the panel is this: If he gets the W, or even takes the Eagles to the Super Bowl, do you extend them in Philly, or even even more so, give them a starter's contract with years to come? First of all. I recently heard from over there that he's making 20 million this year. That's correct. Saint Nick is making that much money. It's ludicrous. If I can sit on the bench and then just play relie play reliever and make 20 mil, sign me yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but his contract is over this year. They it's over. To, he's a free agent. Wentz. ACL and now a vertebrae issue. Yeah, plus he was injury prone in college too. I know he's in his prime. Nick Foles. What do you get for oh. Nick Foles or Wentz though? Hey, who, who picks him up? For, for Wentz, you're gonna get a first rounder back because he's a franchise quarterback. Foles at Arizona, <clears throat> eh, not necessarily franchise quarterback. Remember, he wasn't even the best quarterback in the Pac-12 or Pac-10 at that time because it was Matt Barkley. Wow. Yeah, but Foles has already proved himself in the NFL. He I has. think he has. I mean, he's a Super Bowl MVP, and, and you're riding behind an injury-prone, so-called franchise quarterback that hasn't taken your team anywhere. And what makes it that much better is he's not even the starter. So if you're not the starter, expectations are a lot. It's, uh, it's very different for you, like to come in the, come into these games. So he comes into these games like it's it's no stress. But you can't been pay there, him and that. Wentz. You can't pay both. No, nah, you can't pay both. So of them, you have to choose, and if you had to choose right now on the spot, who would you pick? For, for the oh man, yeah. Yeah. No, on Juwan, the spot. You're right. playing. You gotta, all right, so this is the question: You got to trade one. That's what you're saying. Right. Okay. Exactly. Who right. do you think the locker room wants? You know who I got. I want to know who the locker room oh, wants. Man. Numbers don't lie. I'm going, I'm going with the guy who has who has a statue outside of the stadium. Wow. Mike Rock Jaworski? Rock, Rocky <laughs> Balboa? See, no, that's, that's up the steps. No. How did I miss that? That was great. Good, good Philly, call. The guy with the Philly special statue outside the stadium. <laughs> Numbers don't lie, man. That's all I'm saying. To back you up, Foles has the highest passer rating at 105.2 in NFL history. I, I, Minimum 15 attempts. I say you keep Foles. Uh, Wentz to me. I mean, look, look what did the Rams? They did something similar with Donaldson with uh, Sam. Uh, what was the quarterback? Bradford. Sam Bradford. Yeah. Where did I get Sam yeah. Donaldson from? Oh, no. Is that a news anchor? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't the Rams? No, no, Sam, Sam Donaldson. Donald, Donald, Donald. Donaldson played for the Mavericks oh. basketball. That oh, was no, a Sam center. Donaldson. I was thinking was the anchor. They traded him for Tom Brokaw. Never yeah. mind. Everybody's no, so uh, old. Sam on this Bradford. <laughs> Sam Bradford. They, the Rams did yeah. something similar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think. I think that's the Eagles' move. I mean, but we're in Vegas. So you know the hot hand eventually cools off. There's something to be said yeah. about playing pressure free. I don't think Foles is a hot hand. I don't Correct. think he's a flash plan, in a pan, man. Yeah, free. Foles is. I, I believe just a. A, a quarterback by chance that had some lucky circumstances fall his way. Last year, Matt Ryan should have beat them with a couple passes to the end zone. The next game when they played the Vikings, you look, the Vikings were coming off that miracle of Minnesota. They were flat. So you're saying you could trade Foles and keep, and keep Wentz? I would. It's the logical play. The emotional play is probably keeping Foles. Nah, man. Exactly. I mean, dude, all right, listen. If, 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 first of all, you can't bring all, – all you got to bring up is NFL. Screw college. College means nothing. In the NFL, Nick Foles has proven himself. I mean, uh, again. One year. One year in the NFL. But what regular, has Wentz regular done? Regular season. What has Wentz done? Wentz, before he got injured last year, would have been the MVP. And that's the reason okay. why they had the number one seed. If, if right. Foles was the quarterback for the entire year last year, there's no way Philly would have had the number one so seed. Then, but that's like saying, do you think Wentz would have won the Super Bowl? Do you different. think Wentz? Wentz? That's no, a, I no, I don't. Get, no, I don't. I don't think, think he would have. 
I don't think he would have. I'm sorry. Dude, he was on fire, man. Yeah, he was. He was, like, he was, was on fire. Right. So what and, about and, this year? Let's let's take this year. What did he do this year as a starter? What it falls to at the beginning of the year as a starter. Huh? Philly didn't score more than 10 points a game. Ooh. Let's checkmate. <laughs> the guy's journaling how to be a better father in between meetings. <laughs> He's next level right now. Journaling how to be a better. All right, let's get to. Let's get, I'm not even a father, and I'm get impressed. Let's to Alex's shoes. Let's change the subject and get back to Alex's shoes. <laughs> no, no. Do not for nothing. Those shoes were struggling. Yeah, well, so so, so are my picks. Segueing nicely. <laughs> That's a great segue to these picks. Let's get into it. Um, first of all, I dominated last week. Just putting that one out there. You weren't here, so, but I dominated. <laughs> and uh, Money Monaco, you, you didn't do so well, did you? I went 500, my lock hit. I was most proud that I took Philly and the win, uh -huh. and they won. We all took Philly, though, didn't we? That is correct. Yeah. I think we all did. Yeah, so, okay, nothing special there. Did you, did <laughs> you my luck. Did you take the Texans, though? Oh, wait, you all took the Texans. I did. I, I took the Colts. Oh, Isn't that oh. crazy? I took the Colts. Uh, I mean, you guys all, all took Alabama. To, you know, I forgot. I took Clemson. You're to on fire. You, you rebel yell again. Like, Roll Tide, let's go. There oh. it is. Woo! Took the Ravens as well. I did, too, I think. No, I didn't. No. Yes, you did. I did. Never mind. Was okay. It's your only loss. It's my only loss. Yeah. So uh, let's start with you, Lamar. Who, who, who do you got this week? I got uh, Chiefs, Colts game, Colts. Defense, offense. I think Mahomes, first playoff start, looking back at some of these great quarterbacks of the past, Montana, Brady, uh, Rodgers, all these guys had pretty phenomenal first games except for – uh, Mr. Brady, who might be the best quarterback of the bunch. Uh, don't tell me that, but he might be. Uh, but I got to believe that Alex Luck will come through in this situation. Take the points, plus five. You mean Andrew Luck? Andrew Luck. That's Alex. He has no yeah, luck. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex is, but no Alex luck. luck. Not to be confused with Andy up all night. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was nice. So, well, uh, well, I want to hear your other picks yeah. real quick. Who are the other ones? Oh, my other picks, Cowboys plus points, Saints in a blowout, and Chargers to cover the spread. Ooh, Ooh okay. Money line okay. Chargers. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go with you, Javon. What do you got? Stepping into the Chiefs Colts. Um... I actually like the Colts. I like the Chiefs to win, but I like the Colts to, to cover. Okay, so you think it's gonna be close? I think now, it's good. He's I think understanding. It's, it's second to what? Third to last game of the season. No. And he's understanding the points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm rolling with. Uh, and then now we get to these Rams and Cowboys. Um, I'm liking the Rams um, all the way. Okay. What about points in game? Saints, Saints. Eagles. Um, I love my Eagles fans. Fly high, but um, Saints are going to breeze. Okay. In the defense, and everyone else on the team, like they've had a week off, and then um, they play pretty good at home, playing at home, playing in the state, not in the state, but in the dome. So I like those guys to take care of that, and then well, going, Chargers. Going, going, I'm sorry, going back to the Saints, Eagles. We had a guy bet 320 thousand on the money line on the Eagles. I think it's a losing bet, but yeah. You know. Wow. What do you win? Uh, 336,000. So he bet 320,000, winning 336,000. Uh, I'm sorry, excuse me. He bet 105,000. Oh, 105,000. Okay. Still six figures to win oh, 336. To win, yeah. To win 336. Correct. Wow. That's mm. strong. And then my number four um, Patriots Chargers game. Hey, I'm, I like my picks, man. Let's go. Ahead, go, go. I got to I gotta switch it up this week, man. And then Patriots Chargers. I don't know why. What's the spread? Is, is it? Is it? Is it's it right there. Four? It's minus four. Well, I didn't know if it, if it changed. Or no, something. no, that's 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 okay. the real one. That's the real one. The other two, I, like, I don't. I don't does believe. Research like, for this shot. I can't believe like um, that's. It's only like negative four. Yeah. So the Patriots got to win by more than four. Right. Correct. I, I know this. I'm sorry. But, I'm but sorry. I thought it would be more being that they're playing. They're playing in New England, but please don't hit me. But the char <laughs> but Chargers have a pretty good. Um, <laughs> the Chargers have a pretty good road record, and the um, Patriots have a damn good like home record. But um, I'm going with the home team on that one. There, I'm going with the Patriots. Uh, Mr. I'm Brady not mad at that at all. Alex, you want to go next? Yeah, you better believe it, baby. What's your lock? What's your lock? My lock is. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. Afterwards. Okay, do that. never mind. Alex, you want to go next? Of course. 
I'm going Chiefs with the W, even though they haven't won a home playoff game since Montana, since Brett loves to bring up Montana. Guys, it doesn't matter. Anything before these guys were born is irrelevant. Oh, really? Because I think they're going to remember the second biggest blown playoff loss when they are up 38-10 a few years ago and lost 45-44. They're getting a rebuttal here. So you think that in the locker room, the guys, the 21-year-old guys going, remember that. hey, guys, Absolutely. really quick, you know, uh, I was we haven't won since Kansas I was, City was up 38-10. Was I was they were up 38-10 on the Colts in Kansas City. Anyways, without elaborating too much, I got the Colts to cover. Wait, I got the Chiefs to win. Well, you were in the locker room right with up. the Eagles. We were like, guys, really right quick, up. did you know that uh, Norm Van Brocklin – <laughs> didn't throw for three touchdowns 40 years ago. Well, since you're going to love this quote, why I have Dallas plus seven, even okay. though the Rams are going to win, Dallas hasn't won a road playoff game since 92 when I was in diapers. Ooh. That's right. So why don't you go, but they won a Super Bowl in 91. Well, who cares? It means nothing. I think it means something. Uh, and ahead, I also keep, think keep that the way. Pats swallowing the four because Tom is 7-0 and all time against Ooh. Rivers. Yes. And yes. the Patriots yes. are 11 and 1 in Freeze. home games against the Chargers since the 70s. Okay. So let me swallow the four. And you better believe I'm going with Nick. Fly, Eagles, fly. Ooh. All day long. Give me the eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's disrespectful. Over, I'm doing this. Over your San Diego Chargers. No, we're moving on to the next one. Get me all <laughs> hot and bothered over here. Eight I, and a half. I, I'm I, done. I, I'm taking the Pats. I think this is going to be a low scoring situational football game. The weather's going to come into play. Belichick is. is is where the, I think the edge is on this one. I uh, definitely think Pats are going to cover minus four. And we're all in, agree all in agreement in that, except for Lamar. Um, Chiefs, Colts, I agree. I think the Colts are going to win. I think the Colts are a better team. And uh, the Chiefs defense worries me. Eagles and Saints, um, eight and a half is a lot of points to give up. Wow. If I'm going for the win, I think Drew Brees is going to play his butt off. So is Nick Foles, um, as I discovered. 41 it, to 9. As I sent out this email 41 to all to of nine. us. Uh, Nick Foles and, <laughs> and uh, Drew Brees, they were, they were high school, played at the same high school. Yeah. Both two Heisman Trophy winners. Uh, I mean, two uh, Super Bowl MVPs, first time same. ever from the same high school. I think Foles broke all of uh, Brees' records. I discovered that information, by the way. <laughs> I'm breaking John privied us to that. Hey, Siri. Um, I think it's going to be a shootout. I would definitely take the over on that. Um, I think it's going to be close. But I, don't, I, don't, I, would, I think the Saints are going to win. I'd take the Eagles in the eight and a half. And of course, Rams and Cowboys. Guys. Emotion. Hold on. It's let not me emotion. Yeah. Here we go. Here it's we not go. emotion. It's emotion. It let me explain to you guys some. You feel yeah, those pecs stuff? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, your hand just hurt me. <laughs> um, here's the difference. Seven points is a lot. I think the I would take the Cowboys in the money line, but just to play it safe, I think Dallas is going to cover. It's going to be a close game. But here's what people are forgetting: the Cowboys are a team. They play together. They fight together. They've rallied around each other. I mean, you got two brothers on the team. All right, Jalen Smith and, and his brother, the running back. I forget his first Rod. name. Rod. Rod Smith. You've got uh, you've got the Travis Frederick thing. You've got the whole team rallying around Dak. They ra they rallied around Jason Garrett. These guys believe that they can win, oh, and we got Zeke. I think it's going to be a key, key when, factor When were the Cowboys' last, um, last road victory? 1992. Playoff, playoff. Uh, in the playoffs. Playoff road victory. 1992. Here's Divisional people, round. Here's Excuse what people me, are forgetting. The L.A. Rams, that's a home game for the Cowboys. I guarantee you 80% of that stadium is going to be Cowboy fans. They're Mexico's number one team. Okay? They're L.A.'s number one team. They practice in Whoa. Oxnard. L.A.'s number one team? Absolutely. They practice. They've been practicing in Thousand Oaks since Tom Landry. There is so many Cowboy fans that there. Mark my words, it's going to be like uh, uh, Alabama traveling. So are you taking the money line? No, I would take to play it safe. I take Cowboys in the points. I'm going to take the money line, but right. to, to all the people listening, okay. that's my lock. Gotcha. I think so. Let's segue into that, into our parlay block uh, bets. Guys, we have not hit a parlay all season. We have charities that are, that are just, they actually wrote us off. You know We've what? actually become their charity. You know what? <laughs> I think we, should switch up. we need to switch up the charities. Uh -huh. Let's switch up to your, to your charity. All right. Regular Hero. We'll do regularhero.org. Yes. Uh, guys, if you're not familiar with that, regularhero.org is we work directly with the Children's Hospital and the families of people that are sick 
that have sick uh, kids, and we just try to help the families out. Every dollar we earn goes directly to them. So go, go to, uh, go to regularhero.org. So we're going to do the parlay for my charity, which I helped start with uh, Steve Simone, Vinny Fastline, and Johnny LaQuasta. Four Italians. Go figure. Forget about Three it. Three and a half. <laughs> Anyways. Right, what are our locks? What are our parlays? You know I'm going with the Cowboys. My locks, Cowboys, and the points. Javon, who's your lock? I like Patriots to cover. Patriots minus the four? Yes. Enrique Palazzo, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going fools in the eight and a half. I don't care that Breeze is 5-0 and in the Superdome. Peterson's never lost a playoff game, and Foles' only playoff loss is to the Saints. He wants that rebuttal. He's at least playing hard. I'm going fly, Eagles, fly, all day. Okay, that's your luck. For the win or for the cover? For the cover. Okay, do you think the Eagles are going to win? No, I think this is the Saints' year to get back to the Super Bowl. Lamar? I got to say Colts. Colts is your luck. luck. And the Colts. All right. And that no-name defense that's going to smash for the cover. For the, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with that. So this concludes another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Uh, guys, once again, I want to thank, uh, thank Lamar for coming in. I think thank Jay you, lost you. his job, uh, <laughs> particularly about your NFL teams and NCAA. Uh, right. Money Monaco for bringing in his Bobo slash cat heads <laughs> slash generic boat shoes. Uh, the Freak for just being you. But I'm talking about Alex's shoes, though, man. They're awful. Oh, man. And again, I'm Brett Pickham Ernst. <laughs> I'm on fire. Uh, we want to thank, oh, we got to thank Jim for coming in. Oh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Jim and, yeah. and Commissario Tequila, Mandalay Bay Sportsbook, all Gallo, the MGM Gallo, properties. Gallo, MGM. Guys, follow us. Follow us on the D. Go to the DGshow.com, okay? If you can't find us on YouTube, which is easy, just go to the DGshow.com. All of our links are there. You can add yourself to all our social media. And more importantly, make sure you call your mothers. God bless.